do statistical testing on it. What are the demographics? About 65 million Americans have cardiovascular disease. Between five and 600,000 undergo cardiac surgery every year with 100,000 episodes of cardiac morbidity. 30 million people undergo non-cardiac surgery with six million at risk. And this is the important number because if I come up with something that's really complicated and expensive and then you try to do it to six million people, it doesn't work, okay? So whatever I tell you today, you have to multiply the cost by six million to get the real thing. You end up with 50,000 MIs and 20,000 deaths. Now, what are the approaches people have tried in the past? There's clinical predictors, risk indices, and then some fancy test. And we're going to talk about each of these this morning. Next. Well, Lee Goldman, who was at San Francisco for a while, did a study at Harvard where he took 1,000 patients over 40 years of age, and he found nine independent risk factors for surgery. And these have been incorporated into our standards of care. We all agree on them. We all understand them. CHF, MI, PVCs, rhythm disturbances, age, big operations, emergency operations, aortic stenosis, or my favorite one, poor general medical condition. The problem is these are fixed. And if I bring in a person who has all of these problems, what do I do? It doesn't really help you very much. Old, sick people do poorly. Okay, we've seen this. Next. So Mangano did a study in the early 90s at the VA San Francisco. And what we did was we took 474 people who had risk coming for non-cardiac surgery. We put Holter monitors on all of them and followed them for a couple of days pre-op and a week after. And what you found was, sure, old sick people did poorly, but 40% of them had an episode of myocardial ischemia. Now, when I tell people that, they say, that's, that's kind of a high number, 40%. Well, this is not somebody calling the nurse. This is not, they're not pushing the call button and saying, gee, I have chest pain. This is one minute for one millimeter on a Holter monitor over a week, okay? Then people say, well, if it's 40% of people, it can't be important. Turns out this raises your risk of having an event tenfold and raises your risk of death twofold. So here was a dynamic variable, something that we could change that's associated with both short and long-term risk. So we came up with five risk factors, vascular disease, congestive heart failure, coronary disease, myocardial infarction, unstable angina. These are the sort of old-fashioned fixed things. And this new one, myocardial ischemia. And this gave us something we could attack pharmacologically. Now, the job of an anesthesiologist is to transfer anxiety from the patient to oneself. <laughs> I'm supposed to worry, right? And I worry a lot, and it irritates the surgeons because all I do is worry. And this is the famous psychiatric anesthesiologist, Sigmund Miller. Uh, and I tell people to worry more. And these are the things you should worry about. Coronary disease, MI, CHF, unstable angina, peripheral vascular disease, hypertension, diabetes, cigarettes, cholesterol, age over 65. And this new one, myocardial ischemia. Well, the great thing about the VA is we only have two patients. You probably borrow our two patients. There's patient A who has all of these diseases, CAD, PVD, hypertension, BPH, smoking. <laughs> and then for variety, we've got the same guy with diabetes. And they go in the outdoor and they come right back in and we see them over and over again. The problem is you have to deal with that guy. Now, we've tried testing. Let's talk about tests. Everybody wants a fancy test. They want to be able to do something with it. Well, first, you've got to be able to predict cardiac morbidity with a test. You've got to be able to apply it to large numbers of people. It's got to be low risk, high predictive value. And the most important